All right, this is fourth grade, module five, lesson 17. And in this lesson, we're gonna continue using visual models to add and subtract two fractions with the same units. Now, specifically though, this lesson is really gonna be focusing on subtraction with the idea that uh, another way of thinking about subtraction is as an addition problem with a missing add end. So that's really the, the approach of this lesson is to be focusing on subtraction. In particular, we're also going to be subtracting from one whole, where historically in the old curriculum or the old style of teaching, uh, students, this was a, a little bit of a mystery. Uh, oftentimes teachers would teach it um, through rote algorithm, just this here, don't understand it, just do what I'm telling you to do. And this lesson is really going to be trying to develop understanding for our students so that when they are ready to learn the, rote, uh, the standard algorithm, it'll make sense to them. So let's get started on this. So with an eye towards addition and subtraction are kind of complementary of one another, we're going to take our fractions and we're going to write two subtraction and two addition sentences. So I'm going to do just problem A because they're basically the same thing. So let's start with two subtraction. Uh, we could do 9 sixths minus 4 sixths equals 5 sixths, or we could do 9 sixths minus 5 sixths is equal to 4 sixths. Now the addition ones, pretty straightforward. 4 sixths plus 5 sixths is equal to 9 sixths, or we can use that associative property. 5 sixths plus 4 sixths is equal to 9 sixths. So that's essentially all they're talking about here. Now here, we're going to model this problem using a number line, and we're going to do it both by counting up and by subtracting. So we're going to do two separate number lines. So let's start by counting up, because that's my absolute personal favorite. The idea being, we can think of this as 5 eighths plus what equals one whole. So the idea is we can put 5 eighths right here. We can think of one whole right here, but not only is, can we think of that as one whole, we can also think of one whole as eight eighths. So the question is, how, do, how, much, how many steps does it take to go from five eighths to eight eighths? And we can see that it's going to be three steps. So it's going to be six eighths, then seven eighths, and then eight eighths. So we made three steps, so that's three-eighths is our answer. Now that's counting up, counting backwards, and there's no rocket science one way, one size fits all that, that we could do with this. So we could say, well, this is one whole, but that's the same thing as eight-eighths, and we want to count backwards till we get to five-eighths. No, I'm sorry, we want to go backwards 5 eighths. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so where are we going to end up? That's going to be 7 eighths, 6 eighths, 5 eighths, 4 eighths, 3 eighths. So we went backwards 5 eighths, and that's how we got to 3 eighths. Now if we wanted to complete the picture, we could call this zero, this is one eighth, this is two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths, and of course eight eighths. But we're, we don't, we're not expected to draw in all of those other fractions, just count backwards, five eighths. Now here, we're gonna model each subtraction problem with a number line and then solve both, both by counting up and by subtracting, so it's the exact same as the previous slide, only the problem is a little bit more complicated. So let's start by counting up. So here, I'm going to start down here at 5 sixths, and we're going to count all the way up. Now, a couple of ways we could think of this. We could think of 1 and 3 sixths as 6 sixths plus 3 sixths, which is 9 sixths. So the idea is we want to go from 5 sixths all the way up to 9 sixths. So how many steps is it to go from 5 sixths to 9 sixths? 
Well, it's six sixths, seven sixths, eight sixths, nine sixths. So there's going to be four steps. And so that's going to be four sixths. So um, one and three sixths take away five sixths is four sixths. Then we solve that by counting up, starting at five sixths, working our way up to one and three sixths, which is really nine sixths. Now, by the way, you can see the one and three sixths because right here is our one whole. And then if that's our one whole, that means this location right here is one and one sixth, this location here is one and two sixths, and this location here is one and three sixths. So we can see visually that nine sixths and one and three sixths are the same thing. Another way we could have done it um, using this number line counting up idea. Um, we could have started at five sixths, and we could have gone up to one and three sixths. And what we could have done is we could have said, well, if we go up one sixth, that's going to put us at one whole, because that's going to put us at six sixths, which is one whole. And then going from one whole to one and three sixths is another three sixths. So if we were to add these together, we would get four sixths, and that's exactly what we knew all along. So to go from five sixths to one and three sixths is an increase of four sixths. So that means our subtraction problem, the answer is four sixths. Now, the other way we could do this is through subtracting. So we could say one, oops, there we go, one and three sixths take away five sixths. So we know that this is 6 sixths plus 3 sixths. So that's really 9 sixths take away 5 sixths. And if we wanted to, we could say, well, let's start here at 9 sixths and go backwards 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And where are we going to end up? Well, if this is 9 sixths, this is 8 sixths, 7 sixths, six sixths, five sixths, and so the answer here is four sixths, and that's exactly what we knew. So we have two options. We can either solve the subtraction problem by counting up, or we can solve the subtraction problem by subtracting, counting backwards. In the last slide for this video, uh, again, we're going to use number, uh, we're going to subtract but this time we're going to use number bonds to decompose, and we're going to talk about that. So, the idea is, first, we can take 1 and 3 eighths, and we can turn that into 8 eighths plus 3 eighths, which is 11 eighths. And we're going to take away 7 eighths. And then 11 eighths take away 7 eighths. That's the labels method, and we could just say, oh, that's four eighths. And I'm going to leave it unsimplified because we don't need to add to the complexity at this point. All right, so that's the first method. Now, the other method is, oh, if I wanted to draw a picture of that, that would look like this. That would look like, okay, here's my eight eighths. Um, let's zoom in a little bit. So here's my 8 eighths, there's my 8 eighths, and then it says plus I have to add in 3 more eighths, so that's going to be 1, 2, 3. So here's my 1 whole, 8 eighths, plus my 3 eighths, so all together we had 11, and if we're going to cross off 7 of them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then you can see that the answer is there's four eighths remaining. All right. Now, if we want to do the other technique, so we're going to go one and three eighths, take away seven eighths. And the idea is first, we can say, well, eight, one, sorry, one is eight eighths, and then we have three eighths. And then we're going to take away that 7 eighths. So really what we could do is we can say, well, let's draw 
our eight eighths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's my eight eighths. Plus, I'm going to do three eighths more. One, two, three. Now, the idea is I can start with this eight eighths and take away seven eighths. And if I do that, eight eighths. So here was my eight eighths. Here was my three eighths. And I could take away seven eighths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so what am I left with? I'm left with one little eighth here, plus I'm left with three eighths here. So our answer is four eighths, which is exactly what we knew, um, but we did it in a slightly a different way. So parents and teachers, at this point, our students have a choice. Um, that we want them to understand both methods. Ultimately, they're going to get to choose whichever one is more comfortable to them because they both closely align to the standard algorithm that they will indeed be learning. Um, uh, we want our students to try and understand both, but it's absolutely understandable if they have a preference one way or the other. And that wraps up fourth grade, module five, lesson 17, using visual models mostly to focus on subtracting, in particular, from one whole.